Hey everybody, Travis Bowman here. Let's do a video on the Sega Nomad, one of my favorite retro video game things out there. This thing is so cool and it's just amazing that it exists, to be honest. Now, most of you that are watching this video are going to know exactly what this is, but for those of you that might not, the Sega Nomad is essentially a portable Sega Genesis, released in 1995 in North America only. This is definitely one of the cooler handhelds that has ever come out, in my opinion. So the reason that this thing exists in the first place is honestly probably probably due to Nintendo. The Game Boy was just killing it, man. It came out in the late 80s. For some reason, the Sega Genesis was just super popular in North America, and I think Sega of America realized that, so they were really trying to milk that for as far and as long as they possibly could. So naturally, they decided to release a portable version of that console that was so popular here in the States. And honestly, I think it was a really good idea to have such a popular console and then have an iteration come out where you could taken on the go was really really cool but I think the execution left a little bit to be desired considering that you needed six double A batteries that drain like a tub in order to use this console so what we've got in front of us right now this is my Sega Nomad I actually picked this up quite a long time ago it was a Facebook marketplace find and uh, I paid a hundred dollars for it and that was cheap and I knew that even back then at that time that this was a very very good deal for me to jump on considering that it's in pretty darn good condition aside for this nick right here on the top it's it's still in, in really great condition all the buttons and everything are intact the logos haven't rubbed off which is kind of a common thing that these these handhelds go through so in this handheld form factor we kind of have the best control scheme that the Sega Genesis had with the six button uh, layout here and this one's kind of unique none of the other Sega controllers have these oval shaped buttons this is just a Sega Nomad thing and I believe the D-pad is also a unique thing that only was really used on this handheld so in addition to having all of your controls and everything intact on the bottom here you have a player 2 control port there which is a really really interesting touch and of course on the top one of the cooler things about this handheld is the fact that you've got a video output so this can do composite video out but it can also do the really amazing gorgeous beautiful RGB video output just to have that on, on this handheld. That's why it's one of my favorites of all time. I think it's a really unique handheld and to this day it's still really cool. So in addition to talking about the Nomad in its sort of vanilla state, factory state and whatnot, I'd like to talk about a couple of upgrades that I've gotten on this handheld. Let's talk about what's in the cartridge slot. Now you can put pretty much any, any game in there. For the most part the compatibility is pretty darn solid. But I've got the Mega EverDrive in this Nomad, which is a flash cartridge by a Ukrainian based gentleman named Crix. Now he's responsible for the EverDrive line of flash carts. If you're unfamiliar with that, I suggest that you get yourself very familiar with it if you're watching a video like this. But essentially it's just a Genesis cartridge with an SD card slot. And lo and behold, 32 gigs, and you've got the entire library and more for your Sega Genesis, which is uh, just really, really cool. Now, he's done several iterations of this. This is, quite frankly, an older model at this point. This is the original X7, which allows you to do save states and all that good stuff. And just like you would expect, it works just fine on the Sega Nomad, just like it would on your Sega Genesis console. So the elephant in the room when we're dealing with these older handhelds are the screens. Unfortunately, we are just so used to these LED and OLED screens that look so amazing these days that it's really, really difficult to go back to the original screens of some of these handhelds. The Game Boy is also a really good example of this. It just does not age well and it's really tough to, to play some of those games with that non-backlit screen and the ghosting and all that stuff. It's just... It's, it's a bummer to, to go back to screens like that when we're used to something so much better. Just like the Game Boy, the Sega Nomad has its own LCD screen mod here. And that's what you're seeing on screen right there, booting up into the EverDrive. And there's my menu. Let's see what game I was playing last. 
Streets of Rage 3. This screen, I, I cannot state how much of an improvement this is. It is a night and day difference. And the pixels are just so sharp, the colors are nice. This is such a wonderful upgrade from what we were used to seeing. Now I've done a video on the Nomad in the past and I'm gonna have to recycle some of that footage so you can get a look at the screen to see how awful it was, but needless to say, this is such a large improvement and it's totally playable now as a result. And by the way, if you're digging this LCD mod on this Sega Nomad, I'll have you know that this was done by a good friend of mine local here in Arkansas named Jeff Griffin. Now he's done a ton of different mods, and he's really familiar with the Sega Nomad at this point. And I will tell you that if you're looking into doing something like this yourself, I will caution you that there is a point of no return. Once you get to that screen and you take out the old one, there's really no putting it back in. So it's a really kind of scary sort of mod that somebody like myself, who is a novice when it comes to soldering and modifications, especially when you're dealing with super teeny tiny parts. And uh, that's what's inside of this device here. If you're really kind of unsure of yourself as far as doing a mod like this, I would recommend not trying it because it would be absolutely heartbreaking if you reach that point of no return and then mess something up so that's why it's really nice to have somebody that you know that does these types of mods somebody that you can trust that has a lot of experience and Jeff is definitely one of those people so if you're interested in getting your Sega Nomad modded like mine you can definitely check out the links in the description check out Jeff's store and shoot him an email if you want it done for yourself so in addition to having the new screen we need to talk about a quality of life improvement for this handheld regarding power but when this thing came stock out of the factory you had two options you could get a battery pack from Sega that would allow you to use AA batteries and that Nomad took six of them and they just drained like a tub you would go through so many batteries with that battery pack to be able to play this on the go and of course you can rely on the old power supply that you can insert right in here and you could just play this sitting on your couch or chair or whatever you have and that would be another good way to play the Nomad however this is a portable console and the Sega Genesis is not an expensive console so if you really just wanted to play Sega Genesis games at home you could use a Sega Genesis console. They're, they're still really cheap and easy to find these days. There's a modern solution for your battery pack on the Sega Genesis Nomad and that's what I've got installed back here. So this is actually a 3D printed battery pack by a company called Laser Bear Industries. And you can see it right here after I've taken it off the Nomad. This is a very, very interesting piece of modern equipment designed for your old Sega Nomad. So I'm gonna slide this door off so you can see what's inside, but bear with me because it's gonna be probably a little screechy. What we have in here are two 18650 3500 milliamp batteries these are designed to be recharged they're used for a lot of different equipment you know like vaping equipment and and various other you know RC cars and just anything random like that that you can think of these batteries are probably used for them these lithium batteries here they hold a charge very well they're really robust and a lot of people like them for that reason so it makes sense that they would be the replacement for your double A battery so instead of six of those we now have two of these this little door slides off all the way if you'd like or you can there's that squeak I was telling you about you can just keep them in there like that once they're in there you really don't have to take them out you don't have to take them out and, and use a third-party charger because of this new battery pack here now this is the second iteration you can see that nomad pack mk2 so this is the second revision of this this version has a new led light you have the option of charging your nomad with your original power supply as well as a usb c and that's rated for five volts so make sure you get all of this voltage information correct i don't want to be responsible for anybody damaging their nomad because that's very possible there's always a risk of doing that when you have new tech that you're trying to mesh with old tech. So please do some research and be aware of what you're getting into before you jump into something like this. And I say that because I potentially almost really screwed up my Sega Nomad by 
not using the correct batteries. It's not just any 18650 battery. Okay, there are different versions of these. Now these actually have the little nipple on the end of them just like a Duracell would. Now there are some batteries that don't have that, so please, please check the link in the description if you want to learn more information about this. Don't use the wrong batteries because you definitely will fry your Nomad, and I don't want to be responsible for that because these things aren't cheap. So that original battery pack, I've actually never had one before, never seen one in person. This is the connector right here where that connects in. And just like the original battery pack, you've got a similar situation over here with these little angled sort of uh, teeth looking things right there. You line everything up just like so, push it on down, and then you're good to go. And then you turn that sucker on and you got power. So I've been waiting for something like this for a very long time because for the longest time I had a Nomad with no LCD screen, it was just the vanilla factory screen, and I also had nothing but the charger. So I, if I was going to play this I would have to kind of sit in the corner next to the wall outlet in order to enjoy the Sega Nomad. But now I'm so happy that I have these upgrades to enjoy this, this handheld console to its full potential. So the title of this video, Is It Worth It? Well. That is a loaded question, my friends. This is some niche stuff that we're looking at. And like I said before, if you just want to play your Sega Genesis on original hardware, that's extremely easy to do and cost effective as well. You can find those Genesis Model 2s and even the Model 1s for not a lot of money these days. They were very popular, at least in North America. I'm not sure how it is outside of the United States. It's a very common thing to find the Sega Genesis console pretty much everywhere. So that's not a problem. But this right here is a different story. This is almost kind of like a collector specific thing. There weren't a ton of these that were produced and the ones that are out there, it's 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 kind of difficult to find to be honest. You know, I, I got extremely lucky when I found this on the Facebook marketplace and it was a 45, 50 minute drive away from my house. And you better believe that I jumped in the car instantly that day and drove that, that 50 minutes to go pick this up because I just, I couldn't believe that it was out there, you know, and that I could have a chance to finally own one of these things. Now I'll give you some screenshots of eBay currently, the sold listing so you can see what these are selling for and be prepared because they're not cheap. That brings me to that, that point of this is kind of a collector thing. So it's really gonna depend on where you come from, what you're looking for, if it's gonna be worth it for you. But if you're like me, you really enjoy playing on the original hardware because it's not just about you know playing the games, it's about enjoying the history of it. This is really cool old school technology that, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm really surprised that it even exists at this point. It's a super cool thing and I'm glad to have it, you know. As a big fan of the Sega Genesis, it was my first console growing up. I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I, I'm super glad to have this console with all of its upgrades, which by the way, are really not that expensive. I think, don't quote me on it, but I think that LCD screen, it's, you know, 60 or 70 bucks. That's usually about what those LCD screen kits cost for these old consoles. And the battery pack was about the same, you know, that you can buy the, the battery pack pre-assembled or you can put it together yourself if you're handy with soldering. The batteries themselves aren't really that expensive either and they last a long time so there's that but if you just want to play some Sega Genesis games on the go there are so many other options for you out there. Like for example this is kind of an old thing at this point now but let's take a look at this. This is the Nintendo DS. Ironically we're talking about a Nintendo handheld for a second. I've got this hacked and I don't have any Genesis games on there at the moment, but it's totally possible to load up with a bunch of different emulators if you wanted to play any Sega Genesis game. And I'll be honest with you, this guy right here was super cheap. I picked this up also on the Facebook Marketplace, but I picked this up for $10. And uh, I think the only reason why it was so cheap was because it looks like somebody had a dog kind of get after it, and so this L button pretty much just doesn't exist anymore. It's kind of a solidified uh, chew toy at that point. But how many times do you use that button on the DS? I really want to know. This is such a great handheld with that larger screen and everything. Genesis games, they, they look really good as, as well as DS games. Pretty much any of those old systems will look good on a console like this. And that's just the DS. You know, we haven't even talked about something like the Steam Deck 
where the uh, emulation has really, really taken off. You can play anything probably up to the PlayStation 2 and maybe even a couple of instances the PlayStation 3. So the last thing I'd like to talk about is that uh, 3D printed case that you see back there in the back. So my buddy Billy actually made me this for my Sega Nomad and he designed it himself and it's it's a really really cool one piece sort of situation. I mean you've got the lid and you've got the box itself but it's designed to house your Sega Nomad and uh, for the most part I, I'm really really loving it man. He, he really went all out for this and he's selling these on his Etsy store as well as a bunch of other Sega console stuff if you'd like to take a look at that. So I'm trying to think of some negative things that I could say to warn you about this total situation. And other than, you know, using the correct batteries, the only thing I can think of is that even without the battery pack, this is not a lightweight console. With the battery pack on there, this is a little bit heavy now. It, uh, it's, it's a very, very heavy console. Yeah, it's, it is a little heavy and uh, it, it will kind of wear on your hands a little more than a handheld console that you're probably used to at this point, especially with that new battery pack. The only other thing I can say about it, I'm constantly trying to be very, very careful with this because it is so heavy and it is so big. If I were to drop that, it would probably do some very, very nasty damage that wouldn't be easy to repair. And that brings me to my very last point, ladies and gentlemen. This console is very, very expensive and it's just rare. It's a rare console and only came out in one country in the, in the United States and the people that are into it have gotten it by now. The demand was there from everybody that was trying to relive those childhood days of the Sega Genesis and now they have. A lot of collectors have these consoles and some, some people are selling them on eBay and they're not giving them away. I seriously doubt that you'll be able to find something like this for $100 anymore which is a damn shame but you know, that's the way that it is these days with these retro consoles. Everybody's trying to go back and relive their childhood, and what a great way to do it. But from my viewpoint, I'm the dude that's going to be bringing this to work and playing it on his lunch break, you know what I mean? I don't view myself as a collector. I actually like playing these things just because it's nice to relive the history. You know, I think stuff like this is in incredibly cool when new technology comes back to revisit the old technology to enhance it and make it a little more modern for us to enjoy today. And this is no exception. I really do like the Sega Genesis Nomad. It's one of the coolest things that I've got as far as retro gaming. And I just wanted to make a video about it because it is really cool. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it informative. Let me know in the comments section below. Do you still have your Sega Genesis Nomad? Have you ever done any mods on it? Have you messed around with this 3D printed battery pack from Laser Bear Industries? And if I missed any information that is probably good to know about this Sega Nomad, please let me know in the comments section below. I really appreciate you guys subscribing. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.